let's play a little bit on um, the telos. Uh, I just want to play on this for a bit. Given the fact that we're talking about simulation tech, we're given AI, VR tech emerging, um, what's being unleashed with quantum computation. So ultimately, it seems as though the way that a tree drops seeds and those become trees and the way that a zygote makes a human and humans procreate make more humans, um, the same way that a big bang makes a civilization and we make more big bangs. Do you see the recursion as the telos? Um, do you see this as a quine in a sense? By telos, do you mean some kind of like purpose to the, to the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, I guess I, my view, the recursion comes in, the kind of self-referential nature of things comes in with life and with it's crucial for consciousness with, you know, because we're, we're kind of self-starting creatures. We're, um, there is no, we're both the puppeteer and the puppet, you know, of our, of ourselves. Uh, but I see, I think I see, that's actually a really interesting prompt because I, I, I would say that I see the evolution of the universe starting at the Big Bang as, rather than a kind of recursive process as quite a kind of linear process, like a kind of, like a radial process of like a flower blooming or something where you have a big bang and then you have physics becoming, bi becoming chemistry, becoming biology, becoming life and just increasing complexity. And it's, but it's this very, um, I don't know, aesthetically, I like it as well. It makes me feel very like reassured that the world is just moving in one direction and, and it makes it things feel less, loopy and and complicated um <laughs> than uh, the kind of quine quine picture because when you when you start getting interested in consciousness you really can tumble down you know holes of solipsism and you know not knowing where the where the kind of floor is um of reality but i would say yeah actually when it comes to so when it comes to reality itself <clears throat> there's a sense in which we kind of touched on earlier you know newton had this idea that everything that the universe is made of little separate things little separate bricks that are truly separate and then with quantum mechanics we now know it's far more like an interwoven tapestry or like a house of cards where every kind of piece is dependent on on all the other pieces and consciousness is like that as well i think this is how you can get consciousness arising out of a physical system because it's not like it introduces a new substance into existence but at the level of information, a system can hold that the world is one way as opposed to another way. It can hold that something is hot versus cold, but then there are correlations with like, well, hot things tend to be more red and yellow, you know, these like long wavelengths of light rather than kind of blues and greens. In this kind of self-referential process, you build up consciousness. You, you, you get this kind of house of cards of more this, less of that. And this is kind of touched on the Buddhist concept of emptiness. When you in the West, we have ideas of qualia, the idea that redness is a thing. Like it, the idea of qualia was supposed to be like an atom of consciousness, which I think should sound like a kind of nonsense idea. It, red is only red with respect to everything else in consciousness. You can't isolate it and have just, just red. Um, and so this is the Buddhist concept of emptiness. That if you really look at red for long enough, it loses any sense of any intrinsic essence. It's all just this kind of mirage of, of relative relative change. So I'd say in that sense, I don't know if that's precisely in the way you mean this kind of this kind of self-referential structure, but I think, yeah, everything emerges in this in this way, and it, and it's part it's a feature of a holistic picture of things, a holistic nature of consciousness and the holistic nature of the physical world as well. In in inevitably it's going to happen with the West becoming uh, more and more. And even China, you know, Japan is a canary in the coal mine in many ways with humans passing. I don't know if you've seen the husk, but the husk is the, the contraption now for, for the ultimate uh, unit where you're literally just, you know, you got your bed, you got your computer, you got your controller, your, your, you know, you got your whole setup and, and soon it's just, you know, it's right in it's 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 connected directly in and and you're it, it if you don't put on vr and use it for 30 minutes and then take it off and think to yourself how am i not already in vr then you <laughs> then you don't know but if you do have that process you take it off 
and you in, and you make the self inquiry and you go how how is this not already vr then you know and I, and and i think that 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 is the essence of where um the modernized world is pushing and that the modernized world is going to triangulate on the exact same realization that 5,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago from everywhere across the world, it's a perennial spiritual wisdom um, it has been triangulating on. So, so um, we'll see. And I, and I do think that John Smart's transcension hypothesis has a lot of, um, of potential uh, as well. Um, we've hit on so many awesome things. I want to um, <clears throat> I want to talk about this for a bit. I think that you know you've had incredible guests on your show already. I highly recommend you guys to go and check out James's podcast. He's crushing it. Check out his YouTube channel. Um, Christoph Koch episode was so good. So was um, you know Donald Huffman. Both such great episodes. If we take um, if we take Hoffman's perspective for a little bit, we were talking about this a, li- a bit before we started. Um, it seems like a multimodal user interface and the video game analogy we were just talking about a moment ago. Um, those are basically anyone that has anyone that goes through that process of self inquiry we were just talking about inevitably comes to the realization that they themselves have a uh, a user interface that they are they're in a reality they have a they have this user interface there are um there are fitness functions you know that if you if you eat um a a, a bucket of ice cream um you're gonna feel like shit and that you're gonna feel like shit the next day and that you're probably shaving um could be shaving a day or two or even a week off of your longevity um and now versus if you eat a salad you're going to feel great you'll feel great tomorrow you'll you might you know have an extra week on so there's there's there are um there are these uh, these understandings of um of what you do in this in this reality um, is going to inevitably um, make you more peaceful, more happy, uh, a, a better mate, um, more knowledge about truth, more um, uh, a better better mate for procreation. So the 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 I and I'm I'm also curious where living mirrors theory could potentially um, synthesis with the multimodal user interface because in a sense that's what the cell does have the cell has a a a, a, ledge, a ledger and an understanding of of the world and then it's constantly updating that based on fitness so do you, you see a synthesis of of hoffman and, and you and in, in a sense as well i can see your head nodding <laughs> yeah i um so i think that's a really really important point so um yeah i would say when so when i was an undergrad when i first was kind of introduced to psychology and neuroscience it was taught kind of um that it was kind of a fact or almost almost a, a point of definition that colors are not out there in the world beauty is not out there in the world things are not objectively colorful objectively beautiful um those are qualities that exist in consciousness and this was just like day one of like talking about perception let's get our <laughs> definition straight if your know, leaves are not green you perceive them to be green but that's that's in consciousness right um so when i first saw donald hoffman's theory it took me a while to to understand what he was saying was radical because when i when he says a case against reality is the name of his book and he was saying the world isn't actually full of these colors i was like well that's that's a fact basically like i think if you're thinking about the world the right way it's that's that's something yeah that's, that's true but then he it turns out he's saying something far more radical that like you know the moon isn't there when you're not looking at it that kind of thing i think there's something even though it's not um it doesn't have the same appearance like appearances happen in consciousness i think there's some structure out there in the world that persists when when we're not looking at it but um but yeah so so this idea that conscious the contents of consciousness are absolutely and i would basically say only tied to fitness payoffs is the term that hoffman uses but like um so there's structure in the world and you perceive you know, when you're hungry, you perceive certain food to be appetizing and delicious. And when you're not hungry, you know, if you eat too much chocolate, then the same thing can now appear disgusting, right? Like your conscious perception, <laughs> the attribute of the thing in the world has changed. Yet it's not like physicists have to account for some, you know, um, some atom that decays from 
like nice atom to disgusting atom <laughs> you know that's not how we think about the kind of disgustingness or appetizingness of the chocolate being out there in the world same is true for color same is true uh for all these other things which is you know that that's that was the way i was thinking about consciousness when i came up with my theory because in my theory it's absolutely entirely tied up with the organism's survival um and the contents of consciousness are, are completely tied up with with what you might call fitness payoffs um and also i think to just get a, a feeling of this kind of the fact that what you perceive is an interface for the world you know like um if you perceive you know based on your history and, and your kind of genetics and stuff you might perceive certain foods to be appealing because because of that history and because it, it makes sense for you and in the same way like you know imagine if as well as us becoming this intelligent technologically advanced civilization imagine if slugs had as well and you had you know slug hollywood celebrities who all the slugs agreed were the most beautiful perfect you know things they thought they were like objectively beautiful i don't think i would be agreeing that the slug hollywood celebrities are objectively beautiful right and that's that's a way of seeing that the perception the conscious perception of, of beauty is is not out there in the world and and as weird as it sounds it's true for all of our our senses and we saw this with the the hysteria around um that dress that went viral the kind i was of black gonna talk to you about dress, it right? beautiful Good, it's thank a perfect you example i was very excited when that came up because i was like this is like what this. i'm interested in it's, and this points to something fascinating about the nature of reality exactly that, like you're poised on understanding something but then the then the media kind of took it in a far more like no no it's just this this kind of you know some more kind of a less radical kind of uh, way to it's like the, the biggest yeah, metaphysical yeah. thing and, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly and it and it's what you can do from that point and the same thing was with that um that sound clip of yanni versus laurel oh, people yeah, heard it as yeah. these two different words right what you can can realize that is that what you're seeing is not perception is not like you're looking out of these transparent eyeballs to a, a freestanding world J just james just one given. quick it's thing just the way it is just one quick thing on mm -hmm. that is that you can change your um perception to on the laurel yanni but you because you can you can go back and forth yeah. like the ruben um uh vase or the necker cube um but on uh you can go back and forth but on the um uh the dress I, you can't, at least um, from what I've tested with people, they can't go back and forth between gold and white and um, black and blue, which that I think is the most profound part of, of it. Yeah, anyway. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. No, but that's interesting in its own right. I think it might be to do with the fact that like with the, with the, the vase face illusion where it kind of changes, there's some structure there that you can scan your attention around and you can, you have some model in your head of the two things and you can, you can kind of actively engage with the process. Same with Yanni and Laurel. You can really try and focus on the high notes that sound like Yanni and all the low notes on like Laurel. With the dress, it's more, I think <laughs> the the thing that seems to account for which way you go is, is if you think you're discounting blue light or yellow light. I read one thing that's, I don't know if it was actually uh, real data or if it was just speculation, but there was the speculation that, that men would see it um, as, I think it was black and, and blue, oh no, sorry, yellow and um, gold and white, because they played more computer games with blue lights. So their brain is used to being like, oh, like the room's drenched in blue light. I better discount some blue. Yeah. And then it pushes it in that direction. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's, that's was actually proven, but that's, I think that might be why it, it moves that way. But, uh, but yeah, so what it shows you though, is that this is not a pre-given world that looks the way it looks. There is this a screen of there's consciousness and there's all these weird appearances inside it and you are you are just another one of these appearances you know when i'm looking at my hand it feels like this hand is inside me but actually it's appearing in consciousness it's it's visually continuous with the rest of the background and that's when you can your kind of sense of self can blink out of existence and there can just be this kind of light of consciousness and a bunch of phenomena happening and you can realize that fundamentally that's what's going on and there's a delusion when you 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 know you take this bundle of perceptions and you say this is me these appearances of hands are, are me and you know i'm saying there is an organism but the organism is not the same thing as the concept of the self and it's the concept of the self that all of our suffering is is fed through you know this was the kind of buddha's insight that but that um, neuroscience is now kind of showing to be true as well right so it could be fair to say that there is a um, within the living mirror theory, there is a, um, uh, 
the living system has its uh, a coupling with the environment and in that process the multimodal user interface is what the living system uses so there's that that's kind of what the synthesis could yeah be. and i would say actually it's kind of important to the interface idea is actually important because consciousness is not like you're being aware of the thing out there what it is is the thing out there is utterly beyond your boundary. You know, like you're here as this kind of bounded physical system. Photons might fall on your retina, but you know, your insides, your brain, everything else is just utterly in the dark. And so consciousness is this active, creative, generative kind of hallucinatory process. And when you understand that the world doesn't have an appearance, it kind of gives you an appreciation as to why it's possible for consciousness to exist. Because it's not, it's not like um, there's a thing and I have a symbol for the thing and how does my symbol become conscious? That's how a lot of people think about this stuff. They, you know, it's the kind of computer analogy. It's like there's some symbol over here and there's some real thing over here. Like say that there's a green object and there's a symbol saying green. Why does this symbol become conscious whereas in a com computer it doesn't? Why doesn't the word green when I write it down, why doesn't that become conscious? Whereas I'm saying no, like there is no green thing. There's patterns and then your consciousness is this fundamentally, you're generating, yeah, like a simulation, generating an, an interface of beliefs about the way the world is that is this kind of house of cards of like uh saying it's this way as opposed to this way so it's it's entirely uh generated within the organism well through interacting with its environment but it's it's not um the, the each each percept is is only cashed out in reference to all the other percepts so it's this is like relativistic framework I've I've really appreciated um, a way of um, of perceiving it regarding um, when you're when you're under when you're at a uh, an event where you're you know you're <clears throat> you're at whether it, it is literally just take any uh, sports or music style event in a stadium and it, you're gonna have a different point of view than somebody sitting across the stadium and when when you also register that um you're gonna get that at a at a deeper level that it's not some um uh that that you in when you gotta play game i feel like you gotta if you really dive in like we didn't have the tool of games we had it but we didn't have you know this is the game changer is that when you it's literally the screen like the screen as an analogy the game as an analogy to this is exactly what makes us realize that when I go into the 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 the, the first person perspective in, in 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 and I'm playing and I'm playing the game and I'm and I'm walking around in the in the simulated world and I have this the the relationship between me as a living system and my environment and my interface and <clears throat> all of the all of the stuff that I have in my parcel that I'm my that I'm carrying around with me and that I have these quests and these objectives and that the, the more that you kind of follow that uh, train of thinking the more that you're going to realize that James is also a player and James also has his little um, world that that James is playing in as well and James is going to see things like you are you is it is that it? Are you? Is that your girlfriend, or is that the fiance or wife? What level are, are wife, you? Yeah. Wife. Okay. <laughs> wife. Wife. Well, what, what's her name? Hey, Rebecca. Rebecca. So um, that you know, you have a wife. You have you know, you have a wife. You have Rebecca. Like you, you have like you have that in your life. I don't have like a wife. So like my like the fact that we like that you have a wife and I don't like that is like a significant reality changer. And so, um, like, that's, like, that's something to, like, keep in mind, like, somebody that's living in a completely different country is basically on, in a sense, their reality has a significantly different, um, like, you're in, you're mostly in London and in the mountains of Portugal. And so you're, you're inevitably going to have a different map than 
uh, California in the Midwest and stuff like that. So, um, but, but, but there's also, there's some, there's a synthesis between if we don't break it down in two, there's a synthesis where it's like, in order for us to um, have this Zoom call, we have to respect the objectivity of the science that is occurring, that is enabling the, um, the, the computation, the, um, the, the, the electromagnetic communication, um, so you, 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 you have a, a, a synthesis that's going on. If we want to agree that the H2O molecule um, looks a specific way or that the, the cellular respiration and, um, and the oxygen cycle on the planet happens a specific way for, for, for every person that inhales the, the O2, I think that, that, that there's going to be a, a synthesis between those um, those individual gamers uh, in their worlds with the fact that all of those gamers are inhaling um, O2 and their hearts are beating a hundred thousand times a day, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I think um, also the idea of being the kind of gamer with the headset on, you, you mentioned earlier the kind of simulation stuff, um, which obviously is the name of the podcast as well. So maybe it's relevant to, <laughs> to touch on that. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's interesting that I, I guess it's not something I've dwelled on very much because um, I think it's the, uh, the thing we spoke about before where I was saying like, as a scientist, it's like, I'll map out what I, what's within my domain. Like, so the, for, before the big bang, we might be, you know, I, I mentioned earlier ways of thinking about why anything's happening at all. And I'm happy to speculate about that. But then, you know, like what happened for the big bang is just kind of outside my window. Um, what, you know, what happens in the future is as well. Uh, so I, I, I think like, I guess I see science as mapping out this little space we're in now. And most people think it's the entire space, right? They think big bang, this thing and that's it. I I suspect there's you know like why wouldn't there be vast amounts of stuff going on outside of our, our window? I see no you know reason why you wouldn't think whether you want to call them multiverses or simulations within simulations within simulations. To me, that seems absolutely you know if not um, plausible, likely you know that something weird is happening. Um, before uh, I think before certain psychedelic experiences, I would have said there's no reason to speculate like it's just it's speculation it's like saying am i a solipsist and then you can have experiences where you, you seem to wake up from the simulation and that <laughs> that definitely gives you that kind of strange loop idea of like wait like uh, is this some is the simulations all the way down and you know you can kind of tumble through them through in some way but I, I think i ultimately come back to kind of knowing my place as a scientist and, and thinking i'm gonna if this is a simulation it's a beautiful pretty complex simulation that's really relevant for our day-to-day -day living. So I'm going to try and understand this one as best as I can. If at the end I wake up, take my headset off and go, wow, I can't believe that was a game. Uh, I don't think I'll have, uh, I'll feel like I've wasted my time in trying to, <laughs> trying to understand the game. Yeah. And which plays very beautifully into what we mentioned uh, earlier on uh, infinity, making a infinite amount of illusory finity and that plays into the multiverse um, perfectly. Um, there's just, and, and it also plays perfectly in the sense of if you believe in yourself as infinite potential, that there is um, every single possibility of you and uh, is happening right now. And, and also every single possibility <clears throat> in a, <clears throat> in a non-anthropocentric uh, way is also happening. So when you see all of these designer worlds that the video game artists are making, all of those are happening as well. And we ourselves are going to become more and more like designers of worlds. And we ourselves are going to come to the realization more and more of what infinity truly is. I think that that thing you said about our nature is infinite possibility. Like I've been reflecting recently on, I've not tried to put this into words, but there's a, so I'm, I, I don't believe, I believe that kind of organism level, um, to use that term, uh, libertarian free will, the idea that, you know, we can, we can really choose exactly what we want to do with no prior causes kind of causing it. I think that's an illusion and it's a kind of, it's trying to kind of make ourselves feel comfortable in our, in our feeling of separation. But if you look at, the kind of the, the the freedom of the totality of existence and you consider the way that particles interact and anything happens from that perspective everything the way that things interact 
is the perfect choice given what they are. Like this is kind of what a scientific picture of the world is. It's like a lawful thing. It's like given these things and their forces and, and what they are in themselves, they will, they, the universe is utterly free to do exactly what is the most like lawful or most um, appropriate thing for it to do. So you can think of, of when you identify with all of reality as there being this kind of ultimate freedom, ultimate creative fulfillment of the process just just moving forward in terms of what it is and what's best for what it is which is another way of describing determinism which is a weird thing to say is that like that you know from one side from the human idea of separation the idea of the universe deciding everything is like oh no that seems scary that seems like you know i don't like that idea um but the idea of the universe being ultimately free and therefore manifesting its what is most within its own nature is i think is a really yeah it it, it it, to me it gives a scientific way of uh, maybe it's the scientific language i'm adding to what you just said about identifying that kind of infinite potential identifying with that and you're spot on too and i'm i'm, I'm glad that you uh, made content again everybody check out james's channel um i'm glad that you made content specifically about your entheogenic experiences i think that's extremely important the more that um people feel like they are comfortable. It's almost like a, we're, we're having a, a, a species coming out of the closet, uh, in a sense, around, yeah. around the use of uh, unleashing the divine within via these sacred secretions um, of the planet. And, and it's, it's extremely important. I'm glad that you've made content about it. You've been vulnerable about it. I think it's very important. Um, and that's also going to triangulate right on that, that same nature of reality 